Hello and welcome to the Come Alive podcast. I'm your host Meher Mir Chandani. I'm a mother with a story, a business leader with a vision, and a leadership coach with a mission to transform lives and businesses. I am dedicated to empowering 10x growth in fellow humans by unlocking the transformative power of self-connection. I am happy to announce a unique collaboration with YPO Mina and Regional. called every journey has a story to tell it's a 24 episode podcast series of inspiring ypo members if you'd like to be on the show please do reach out to me and i'd love to host you So today I have with me a very special guest Bhavna Goyal. Thank you Bhavna for coming on the show and this special series with YPO which is called Every Journey has a story to tell. Bhavna is a distinguished leader and visionary in both corporate and sports sectors as the president and vice chairperson of the board at Shriyam Power and Steel Industries Limited in India she has played a pivotal role in steering the company towards significant growth and innovation additionally she serves as an investor and director on the board of new horizons alliance in india a key organization behind an advanced sports masters program in collaboration with aists a premier sports education institute based in lausanne Her dedication to sports extends to her initiatives with Hockey India and the Yogasana League, reflecting her commitment to fostering athletic excellence. Beyond the realm of sports, she is the founder partner at Yogashram in Dubai, where she promotes the transformative power of yoga. Her belief in yoga's profound impact on life and leadership underpins her efforts to integrate wellness practices into personal and professional spheres. and a member of the YPO Dubai and Meena One collaborated she is simply amazing so thank you again bhavna for coming on the show thank you maher for inviting me it's a pleasure to be here so let's start i mean i've known you and i've not known your journey and it's it's amazing for a woman to go through that and uh, be a winner on all fronts is really amazing thank you So you did face a significant resistance and skepticism from your team when you took over the steel company when you were invited by your father partly because you were a woman and partly because of your background and comfort of life that you faced in Dubai mm-hmm. how did you overcome these biases how did you earn the respect and trust of the team to make it so successful yeah. um actually meher um, i had to overnight step in into a leadership role because my father fell sick so he was uh, he just asked me to come and i had to take over just overnight so i did not get the luxury to be groomed into the business i grew up in a typical marwari uh, household where sons are groomed to be taking over the business women are of course i was raised in a very modern independent way but got married at 22 had a child at 23 so it was never that i was going to be the leading or or going to be the forefront of looking after the family business um but when my father fell sick and he asked me to come i was like okay i need to do something about it so i i stepped into it it was a very tough uh, uh journey because first of all the company was uh sick at that time it was on BIFR so i had to take a lot of tough decisions uh the team was uh, not confident of my skill set and i understand why because i i was never with them while the company was uh you know my father was leading it i was never exposed to it so uh, uh so when i entered they were all like you know she's a woman she's just here for a while living in dubai what will she do yeah yeah so but the only thing is that i persisted and um, uh what helped me was that i sat down with myself i really looked at myself and i 
uh, I looked at all my strengths and weaknesses, like a really uh, honest, honest conversation with myself. And I realized that, uh, okay, I have many weaknesses. I do not know how to operate on such a large scale business in India, but I'm going to do what it takes. I won't give up. I'm, I'm that way a person who, if I take a challenge, I take a challenge. Um, so I decided to create a strong board. I had a very strong mentor. And uh, with the help of the board, I took many, many tough decisions. I changed a few people in the leadership team, the CFO, the CMO, got the internal auditor, very, very strong internal auditor, changed the external auditor to one of the top, uh, you know, after the big fours, top firm in India, did some um, things for the employee engagement, built a new canteen, got the change going. And uh, there was resistance at every step. I was, it took me two and a half years to get my name on the cabin. So it was a cabin where it said my father's name because it's a factory, uh, my brother's name and my name took two and a half years to come. It was so wow. much of a resistance oh my there. God. But I was like, you know, I'm here to stay. I'm going to make a difference to the company. I'm thinking not about myself, not my ego, but the company. So when I did all this and I continued to, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep doing what I had to do, people started to see the difference I'm making and slowly they started to accept and trust uh, uh, me. But in a, there is a lot of gender bias, in, especially in a steel business in India. I'll give you two examples. So when we were doing our first round of expansions, um, there was a steel, me, a steel, steel mill supplier who came to me, uh, see us and he could not even look at me in the eye. He was not talking to me directly. He was talking to my MD and I'm like, you know, so these people just do not understand that a woman can lead businesses. And the second thing was, uh, there was a very famous steel industrialist uh, who is now unfortunately in jail. But when I got introduced to him as, you know, a woman heading her family business, he was just, he just looked at me and he's like, oh, woman in steel business, I have to be careful and walked up, walked away from me. And My that's God. the kind of, kind of gender bias which is present in India, even though it's a family business, but uh, still. So yeah, I faced a lot of resistance, but my only thing was I persisted and I did what I had to do. And what made you persist? I mean, I've always believed women are strong and they can yeah. multitask and they can really take care of their home along with their uh, families and along with their uh, businesses and themselves. I believe in this. Uh -huh. But, you know, there's always some that kind of a fire. And I keep asking myself this. Yeah. So I really want to ask you that what is it, what was it that time that you're like, you know, I'm not going to give up and I'm going to make sure I make this a success. First of all, it was uh, it was my for my father because... You know, he created such a huge uh, organization and I, I could not allow myself to just let it go like that. Mm. So that was one thing. And then as a as a eldest child of the family, I thought that I had that responsibility to, uh, you know, ensure at least to put in my best. I mean, results are not in our hands, but at least to do what I can do in the best possible way. And uh, I think, yeah, these two things. And, and my, my nature, <laughs> I just can't give up. <laughs> There's something in me which doesn't let me give up. So, Amazing. so uh, that's like, that's me. Yeah. Once I take on a challenge, I take on a challenge. That's amazing. So st stepping into the leadership roles in different situations, such as even in Nigeria, you did step in and you took care of that. And then later into your father's company, made it your company. It must be daunting. And it does take a toll personally. Yeah. How did you manage your self-doubt and fears, especially when you were questioned and second-guessed at every step? Did you ever feel like giving up? I know we just spoke about you would not give up, but you know no, how it is. Course. Some days are like... Yeah. Of course, many, many times. I mean, there are times when I've just cried before entering into a meeting because I, I'm like, I don't know how to deal with this. I felt extremely lost uh, because I did not have my father standing by me and guiding me. So it's not like, you know, I mean, he, he was there, but he was sick and he could not contribute much. So it was challenging. My brother was much younger. So uh, I would cry. I would call up my mentor. I would take, I create, one of the things which I did was to create a very, very strong support system. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer of surrounding myself with coaches, mentors, strong mm -hmm. board, like I said, good friends, mm -hmm. intelligent people. My forum, like being a, Part of YPO forum helped me a lot as well. 
so so i have to big, say a big thank you to them as uh, you know because they gave me a perspective so all those things uh, gave me the courage but yeah self doubt i think is a part of the journey i have realized that every time i'm going to step out of my comfort zone i'm going to get self doubts and uh, i just have to you know persistent i just have persevere. to say okay they are there uh i do a, i sit down and do a cost benefit so so the two ways i deal with the situation is first of all i sit down and do a cost benefit analysis i'm like okay this is the cost this is the benefit is the benefit good enough for me uh secondly uh, what i do is that, that i always um, always ask myself am i going to regret this decision, this decision after 5 years and if the answer is yes then i'm like okay i've got to do what it what it takes and then i just do it so so those are the two things uh there was a time when i had to fly in for a very very important meeting to bombay i was so anxious i i just from the airport i was like let me just go back home i don't think i can deal with it but then again i i was like okay no let me just go to bombay maybe i will not uh, you know sit through the meeting but let me just try and at least fly to bombay so there are many many moments like that in my journey where i've felt anxious a lot of self doubts it's just that you one has to persist yeah, yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and yeah. then every time you come out as a winner don't you think that we have more power than we thought we yeah. had yeah yeah the yeah. learning is always always it's always like oh my god i didn't think i had it in me to do this but i've done it yeah so it's a lot of positive self talk that helped you throughout the absolutely. journey absolutely and i think the most important thing is the people you surround yourself with yeah because uh, that's super important Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We are the five percent of who we hang out with. I think. That's yeah, we are the sum total of five of people. Five, people we, who we, we hang spend out our time with. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Big absolutely. believer, and I've, I've actually benefited a lot by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do believe too. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you took up significant leadership responsibilities while raising uh, two kids, and they were young. what made you decide to step on outside your comfort zone and do you regret anything of course as a mother i think a lot of women i speak to who are, who are working mothers have some sort of a guilt in them because you know uh, i think being mother is one of the most important roles for a woman and you at least i always feel that i could have done better i am very self critical in that area of my life and i'm like you know i do have regrets that maybe i should have done it differently but then you know i i don't allow myself to go into that trip like i'm like okay fine i did what i did I, I, that's what i knew so i do not feed that part of me anymore i used to and i went through a lot of guilt trips in my life and all that but i'm like you know how will it help anyways <laughs> so let me just focus on what i can do now uh, correct that's that's one thing uh what has really helped me is uh, uh, meher is uh, nurturing relationships I am a big believer of uh, having, you know, re- strong relationships. So whether it's with my in-laws, my own parents, my siblings, my good friends, I have beautiful relationships around me. So those things helped uh, create an environment, very very healthy environment for my girls. Like mm. my kids would spend two or three months with the grandmother in India. My sister-in-law is a uh, like a second mother to them. So I f- I didn't feel that you know they felt neglected. So Correct. so they always had elders. They always had family, family around, around them. them. Even though here in Dubai we live independently, but I ensured that my relationships and their relationships have always been nurtured in a way that you know we nurture our relationships in a way that it's uh, fulfilling. Uh, one of the most important. Uh, lessons which my dad gave me when i got married was that he was like you know bhavna there's always a win win way of living life so you know it doesn't if you if you win and others lose you're not going to be fulfilled please find a way in your life which is a win win and uh, and actually you know follow that advice for some reason and that's why now i feel fulfilled that I, you know all these love and blessings and support around me has helped me become uh, who i am or take the challenges which are difficult alone i don't think i could have done it it's not easy for a human being to yeah. just do everything alone Absolutely. you need a lot of support system and i'm blessed to have that yeah. amazing and yeah. well well said i mean i agree as a woman working the support system is your strength and yeah. you can really really 
do your 100 or 200 percent outside when you are safe and secure inside the house and of course loved ones family in-laws sisters brothers family yeah. helps uh, with absolutely. all those times yeah that you feel you're alone but you're not kind of absolutely and even with it like my husband yes. like he's always been very supportive you know it's not easy for him to have a woman like who's con- constantly surrounded by challenges yes. so ours is not a typical home where you know <laughs> it's 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 a home where i have had many challenges but mutit has been very supportive so yeah like once you have a secure home is when you can have a secure uh, career <laughs> i yeah. agree yeah very true so you made tough decisions such as selling non productive assets and securing stress funding at 22% interest to save the company how did you handle the pressure pressure of making these high stake decisions mm-hmm. and what guided you to choo- choose the right path yeah uh, one is of course the situation that we were in those were the decisions which had to be taken uh, again the cost benefit tool which i use always okay if, if i don't do this the company is going so the only option the best bet is this if i had to sell the non productive assets to ensure that our debt comes down that needed to be done uh but yeah because i have a strong board of advisors i i, I those decisions come easy because uh i have learned a lot from my family business in the sense how my fathers and uncles uh approach business i mean they created a huge uh, uh group in india very very successful big name but i realized that they uh, they were all doing it by themselves yeah very entrepreneur uh, you know they had a great entrepreneurship and all that but uh they never created board and uh, and you know a single person uh, some, you you can be the most intelligent and the most capable person but there are times when you're going to be emotional and make some silly decisions and i learned from that and i'm like you know i'm always going to have a board which uh asks me the tough questions why am i doing what am i doing and i'm answerable to someone because it's very easy to get egoistic it's very easy to say get arrogant and say you know what i know it and i'm doing it no I want to be answerable to a board and for them to tell me also that what I'm doing is right or wrong or in the best interest of the company. Absolutely. Yeah. So you do give your success to a good board, your mentor to for you to be able to turn around the company in such a beautiful way and grow. Absolutely. And what does your father have to say about this? He's of course very very proud and very happy. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I guess we all live at some point to get that Uh, pride and that um, yeah uh, like they say tap on the back from our parents and when they feel proud of you you really feel that you have accomplished something in life absolutely more than anything else absolutely amazing literally amazing so after overcoming initial challenges your company is now on the path of continuous growth and with plans to triple your iron production how do you stay strong i believe our growth outside is a result of our inner growth yeah. so what are your daily practices i mean what do you do to stay stay, stay so strong inside so uh, yeah i mean i'm a big believer my quote favorite quote is every moment of my existence the world i encounter is a reflection of my own self and i keep saying that to myself uh, uh we've like the company when we took i mean i took it over it was a d rated company now it's a triple b positive rating So yeah the growth outside is definitely a reflection of the work I've done inside for myself. I am a pretty disciplined person. I wake up like early every day. I have a practice of introspection, breath work, some sort of a meditative practice and uh, I do not touch my mobile until 8:30 at least, uh, you know, so that I have that space uh, in my life to then uh, get busy in the day. Uh I've also had burnt burnt out burn outs as well because you know it was too tough sometimes and i have gone into therapy i think that's also helped me relook at myself where are the blocks which i have so i have done a lot of work on myself to let go of the blocks which i have created and how i see uh, things and that's helped me a lot so i think a combination of having to having a therapist coaching mentally, practices yeah. keeps me mentally strong yeah yeah And so I know in our culture in the Indian culture like therapy and all those things were such a taboo. Yeah. How did you even break free from that mentality and that mindset and go ahead and say that no I I need to do this because 
I did that for myself. Mm-hmm. I at one point I was struggling with my inner self and I went ahead and I did everything from past like regression therapy to quantum healing to theta healing because I just wanted to get out of the pain I was feeling inside. Yeah. So how did you push through as well? Yeah. You know Maher I sat sat down and I saw that every our scriptures whether it's Ramayan or Mahabharat or anything they always had gurus. they always had mentors they always had people who were guiding them all these great kings who are our, we consider gods like ram and krishna also had gurus and mentors okay, now today wow. we don't have that right like we don't have i mean unless you want to go to some famous guru who doesn't even have 5 minutes for you so who who answers your questions who gives you that time of the day to say that okay this is what you're feeling and this is the answer to that so mm. i decided that uh, i mean if our if our gods could have mentors and teachers and maybe guides therapists and guides yeah. if you can call them therapists or whatever it is why can't i like i'm such a small individual in compared to them so i decided to you know do what it takes to to find the right people to help me break through ultimately i was like i'm feeling suffocated like this i why am i feeling what i'm feeling why am i feeling so burnt out i'm definitely doing something wrong and i needed a direction so i went ahead and you know invested in myself yes. yeah absolutely yeah. now we call it investment in ourselves you yeah. know and um, yeah i would say that was one of my break, breaking points as well when yeah. i did the healing sessions i really learned so much about myself that it was amazing yeah i mean of course even sometimes uh, you know even after knowing all that it's it's a journey so sometimes you do feel, feel emotionally low and but at least you know how to deal with those situations uh, yeah. in a better way yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely So you mentioned that yoga is more than just exercise for you. Yeah. It's a way of life that informs your leadership philosophy. Can you share specific examples of how yoga principles have influenced your decision making and leadership style? Yeah. I'm a big 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 believer in the yogic philosophy. Two of my favorite books are Bhagavad Gita and Patanjali Yoga Sutra. And both of them have like the Bhagavad Gita defines yoga as uh, excellence in action is yoga or yog they say in hindi and patanjali says to still or to reduce or stop the fluctuations of mind is yoga and uh, i think uh, and i think the patanjali yoga sutra both these books are the best books to still your mind because they give a very very scientific step by step approach on how to do that and once you are able to do that you are able to connect to your intelligence or your higher intelligence and and once you have access to that i think you are a great leader so so in my experience whenever i have had the calmness of mind and uh, you know i i am i'm able to access that consciousness i have taken some great decisions i have done so well and whenever i allow my mind to get turbulent taken over by emotions my quality as a leader deteriorates a lot so 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 i think it's my job especially as a leader who has who's responsible for so many families you know, uh, to really ensure that my mind is as still as i can make it so 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 yoga is a very important part uh, in, for that and uh, it, at least in my leadership uh, style i think the more calm, calm i am the more connected i am to myself and to others absolutely yeah. and that's lovely actually that's really really lovely because yeah the more powerful and calm we will be that's how we'll be able to lead our business and life and yeah. everything whether it's ch- home children yeah businesses so when did you come across yoga and the power of yoga so i grew up in a family which was always like you know i was exposed to a lot of uh, spirituality but on my own uh, i think when my nigeria business uh, when we decided to exit nigeria in 2017 is when i was i hit my lowest point and i was totally lost and i was like i don't know what else to do and and i was so exhausted after handling such a tough uh, country and that's when i seriously started to actually you know it's very easy to have all this knowledge in the head <laughs> i mean we all know everything because of the books we read and the instagram and everything but really to practice it step by step and to say that okay this is my resp- my life is my responsibility and my calmness is my responsibility is when he, when i started to do it after 2017 i got a great teacher who also helped me study the philosophy of yoga step by step i'm still studying with him and uh, i mean it's a 
daily practice it's 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 work in progress there are times when i'm overtaken by emotions then again to still myself it's a it's a constant uh, especially with the life we lead it's so fast paced and so many different things hitting yeah. so it's it's a conscious effort to to stay still but i at least knowing this and having this in my awareness and having this context in my life has uh, helped me a lot as a leader so you didn't mention that you had a very uh, tough time in nigeria as well because that intervention by you was also unplanned you had to step into a uh, part of your family business uh, which you didn't plan for but you had to take care of it yeah. so how did you do that yeah I, I, sometimes when i sit back and think i was like what got into my head to take that challenge but i took took it uh, it was a very very tough environment uh, nigeria as a country is super corrupt there no i mean it's everything is has to be done in a illegal under the table way uh, it's a very unstable economy the currency was extremely unstable uh, so there were many many challenges in that geography i mean the profits were great a highly profitable uh, uh, country as well because of these challenges not many people go there or venture there so so you know uh, i had a very very good team very very good and honest team i'm lucky i'm blessed that i had that uh because you know i always feel that whenever you're given some problems you're also given some some sort of help things and help help yes. to 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 navigate those through, through those problems and i was given that so we did pretty well we uh, we were awarded the largest uh, the top most exporters in our category in nigeria we were doing well but then the the environment became too challenging and i was like you know i don't want to waste invest so much of my energy for this mm. this is not something which i look forward to doing all my life i i mean i'm just not only driven by money okay you you're making some decent returns but there's no sense of growth there's no sense of passion it's always like stress and why should i do it like i don't need to mm. so then i exited the we exited the business in 2017 we took a very conscious call to exit it exit there were a lot of uh, you know problems uh, that time the country was having and now it's become even worse okay yeah so we are happy that we exited at the right time and uh, you did mention in a, in one of our conversations that uh, you did become very aggressive at one point yeah so was that like an emotional outlet to what you were facing what happened um, and how did you deal with that yeah. aggression so when i when i entered the india business i was because i was like you know second guest all the time and uh, i felt challenged i thought that unless i become this you know male sort of a carry that male energy of aggressiveness and uh, uh being harsh and all that people won't take me seriously so i tried to do that for a while but that was not me <laughs> that was just mm. not me and uh, then slowly i realized that uh, i don't have to be that my skill set is like i said relationships my skill set is understanding people and my st- um, as a woman n- nurturing comes easy to me uh all those things come easy you know the compassion nurturing comes easy to me love comes easy to me so why can't i uh, lead with that because it's ultimately about dealing with people and yes. i think women are great at dealing with people absolutely <laughs> so why don't i use my ability to be uh, like the feminine energy or the being a woman and deal with people like how i would and motivate people and you know yeah. make them excited to work for me instead of being aggressive pushy i don't need to do that so it was a learning it through my journey and no, but i think we all go through that because when i joined the family business um of course my father is a shrewd businessman and that's how he has become who he has and of course he's mellowed down now but i felt i have to be like him to be successful Yeah. And then I also felt that this is not me. This is not my authentic self. I am full of love. I want to give love to my company. And that's why m- one of my values of the company is love. Yeah. And I am super believer of compassion and empathy, love and leadership, which is my second book uh, which I have written. And I think that feminine energy is so needed in a company. For a thriving and company, we need to nurture it. exactly Absolutely. like we nurture our home Absolutely. for a thriving family we need to nurture our company for a thriving uh, business and thriving basically the people should thrive with love impact uh, compassion and empathy yeah absolutely and once i understood that it's about 
people and dealing with people it was so easy it just became a cloud lifted you know and i'm like okay that's easy i can do it it's yeah. it's it it's, comes naturally it comes to me. naturally i think nurturing yeah. comes naturally to yeah. women it's amazing so before we end you've achieved remarkable success in turning around the company that was once under bi fr as you look to the future what legacy you want to leave behind and how do you envision the future of your company under your leadership so i am very excited uh, uh, at the space we are in today because first of all in a country like india i'm grateful to be in a country like india which is on a huge growth uh, path trajectory yeah trajectory uh, the government wants to spend a lot of money for infrastructure we are in the right business for that so the the growth of india supports our business uh we have big plans uh, so we have created a vision we are working towards it by 2030 we want to be a billion dollar we by 2026 we want to be awarded the best place to work in gujarat uh we've created a foundation uh, which is helping a lot of people around the villages uh, we are also planning to get into backward integration with acquiring some mines uh we plan to list our company in the next 3 years to go go in for an ipo so there are many plans and we are working towards that so it's an exciting time as a legacy uh, i want to create a, a a very professionally run company uh with a board very strong board and that's what my vision is i i, I you know i want the family to remain as shareholders and make it into a professionally uh, driven company beautiful yeah it's amazing and i'm super proud of what you've achieved and thank how you, you have ach- achieved it so So well done to you and thank you for coming on this series with YPO and uh, like I believe every journey has a story to tell so thank you for sharing so authentically thank and you, thank you for being thank on you the for show. inviting me it thank was a pleasure you. thank you for watching this episode of the Kamal Life podcast if you've enjoyed the show please like share subscribe and hit the notification bell on whichever platform you're hearing it would love to hear your thoughts and comments and until next time see you soon Thank you.